Folks, welcome to the Jake Feinberg Show. We're joined here by a shaman drummer, uh, actually a mallet major, but one of the swingingest big band drummers of all time, Kenny Malone. Welcome to the Jake Feinberg Show. How you doing, boss? Thanks, man. So explain to the audience what this instrument is. You, is a, a, you created this instrument? Yeah, this is a, uh, an experiment that my friend Sam Bacco and I were fooling around with in our workshop. And uh, we came up with a, the perfect ratio of length and width on the, like a Fibonacci series of mathematics. It was like that. Fibonacci. Yeah. Or a leaf structure in nature. One, three, five, seven, whatever. Anyhow, it came out off the uh, clamps and it was this much longer. And it didn't have any low end. And so I decided to go ahead and chop it off a little at a time to see where I could get a low end coming out of this bottom here. Right. How did you get it? Huh? How did you get the low end? I chopped, this is the first length I cut off, about that much. Wow, that's just unbelievable. And what's the, what's the name of this thing? What's the name of it? It's called The Beast. Well, a producer named it that for me. The Beast. Yeah, it's actually a cajon. But plural, it's cojones. <laughs> so it's like it's, yeah, but a cajon, no, it's not a traditional cajon at all. It just has the same kind of uh, timbre. Well, cajon means a, like a wooden, small wooden drum. It doesn't matter what shape it is. I mean, yeah. I don't know what kind of shape yeah, this small is. That's wooden a, drum. What other toys do you have? I, the audience would love to see. I'm talking to a shaman drummer. Um, and, okay. Yeah. This is a, uh, what do you got? an instrument that my, my buddy Sam and I actually got a patent on. And it's called a shaka. Shaka. How do you spell it? S H A K K A. S H A K dash K A. And it's like a, we sold them for a, a little while, ended up giving all of them to uh, percussionists, you know, for publicity. You gave them out? You didn't? Yeah. Even though you patented it? Yeah. It has tone prongs of different lengths inside where So out of this, it started as a little bigger. It was, it was this size, but these are offshoots, experiments that uh, I built from the first shaka. This is called the head shaka, where you can get water sounds and stuff. The head shaka. Or hard. One of my friends says it was kind of like chewing rocks. <laughs> Is that? And then this is the shock guitar, which is fun to play.
Go in, go deeper on that. Man. And you can tune it like a guitar. Tune it to almost any key, you know. You can find it in there somewhere. <laughs> Anyhow, that's the shock guitar. Let me ask you a question. Uh, what does the name Denny Sywell mean to you? I knew that name from in the Navy. Yeah, he said that he was there. He was. You were his teacher. Oh. in the Navy band, and you used to let him take, when you had gigs, you let him sub in the in the, in the the lab band, in the Navy band. You, he could play with the, you trusted him to play with the faculty, and one day he's walking down the hall, and he hears this six-piece marimba part, like very sophisticated thing going on. And he's like, what the hell is that? Because he had known you as the best drummer he'd ever seen up to that point, swinging the big band. And you walk in, and you're playing this this mallet part. He's like, what? You're like, yeah, I'm a, a mallet major, actually. You were a mallet major. Yeah, that's how I got in the Navy band. I was at sea before that in a, a shipboard fleet band, a really cooking big band, like 17 pieces. We had four trumpets, four bones, five saxes, you know, a, a regular big band. And I went to sea for a year and a half before I auditioned for the Navy band. They had a mallet opening, so that's how I got in the Navy band, was on mallets. Xylophone solos, they needed a, you know. So I used to do all those solos and things, you know. <laughs> it, it, what was the tryout like? I mean, what was the, what was the responsibility? read everything in the, in the book. Sight read. But... When I went in the Navy, I could read anything. You already could read? Yeah, it's the kind of training I got when I was a kid. You know, I was in the Denver Junior Police Band. And this- If you screwed up, you'd, you'd, be, you'd be getting- It was really yeah. strict. This teacher, he taught 50 boys at the same time. You know, the beginner's band, then the inter intermediate band, and then the radio band. The radio band. Yeah, we didn't have television back then. <laughs> we didn't. No TV. Uh -uh. Um, so what, what year, about 1940, what year was it? Television? No, the year you're talking about, Denver, in the Denver Police Band. Oh, I was seven years old. I was born in 1938. 1945. Yeah. Unbelievable. So you learned to read uh, what yeah, kind of... Yeah, well, we had to... Learned to read manuscript, you know, along with the rest of the band, because he taught trumpets and, you know, clarinets and all the different instruments to kids. And we had to learn to name and play all of our scales and chords in every key, you know, so we had a thorough understanding of the harmony and structure, you know. Can you explain the idea of learning a tune in every key? What? How, how it unlocks your ears to learn, to learn tunes in every key? How did it unlock your ears? How did you make your ears bigger? Well, in our Western music, we use like the scales, major and minor and, you know, And it's a very set harmonic structure. There are no ambiguous chords. No, I mean, in theory, but people have stretched it. <laughs> I thrive on stretching it. Absolutely, and that's what I'm trying to get at. So, so it started there. What, 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 uh, what instrument do you have here? This is a djembe. 
And I knew when I got this home from the store that I wanted this drum. I just walked in and hit it one time. I don't know if that low end translates well on the... It will go, yeah. But you hear how long that is and full? And I said, that needs something. It needs an attack on the front end, like the pick <coughs> that controls the time. It's like a hi-hat. That's what I've been into the last few years. Well, you years. keep going. People want you to see, keep, keep creating colors. Keep creating. Yeah, and it's, it goes along with the lyrics of a song. Oh, cool. You know, where you can paint pictures literally with melodies and counter melodies with the band. You know, because it isn't all just about one sound. There's a million sounds on this drum. But the important part of it is learning what to leave out. You know, where what you play is of significance to the music. And you can get all the different sounds on this drum. I've c played concerts just with the snare drum with Daryl Scott and those guys. Because you do have melodies, like on the drum itself. You... and forth on each drum. That's one of the things that got me into it. In the first place, I was five years old and I heard Dixieland music. I said, I want to play drums in a Dixieland band. And that's, I asked my mom and dad for a snare Is it a two? Do you have a two? I had heard the uh, Firehouse Five in that right. Absolutely. genre way back, you know, in the 40s, and where it was really good you know, times, jazz, yeah, yeah. Skull, yeah, Turk Murphy and those cats. Yeah, you talk about going around the world to Athens and yeah. to and to Italy and to South America. That was in the Fleet Band. But no, what I'm, what I'm getting at is this idea is that you can't, you can't. You were able to actually get as close to that indigenous music at that time. Yeah, we played. I with mean, that—that's when all those, you know, Limbo records were coming out and and Calypso records. Oh, cha cha. But when you went, can you talk about a profound experience, like maybe in Africa or in the in, in the Greek Isles, like where you connected with in, the indigenous people and and the rhythms? South America, all over South America. 
we used to jam with the different musicians, you know, at local clubs. Clubs which consisted. Would you of play with healers and stuff? Huh? Would you play with like healers? No. Just because the music has a different significance in those cultures, you yeah. know, outside the club, yeah. you know. Did you have any of that tribal experience? Well, in Trinidad, they wouldn't let us off the ship because <laughs> of the voodoo fires, you know. Voodoo? There were, well, hoodoo. There, there were hoodoo fires there? Voodoo. Yeah. Or however you pronounce right. it, you know. Right. Why wouldn't they let you off the boat? Because it was too dangerous. You know, Americans... Back then, I was with Eisenhower when he went down there on the Goodwill People to People uh, tour. We would play at the different venues that he would be speaking at. I was in Santiago, Chile. Uh, and it was this huge square and I saw him speaking, he was about that big to me, you know. I saw him way off there in the balcony, and there, there was like, I don't know, maybe a half a million people. Really? I mean, it was just thousands and thousands of people, and they were shooting off fireworks over the crowd, and it was raining debris on the crowd. <laughs> You know, like <laughs> little sparks, rockets, and stuff. Yeah, you see anything? Listen, but I they want have a different value of life, or a different what's okay and what's not. You know, it's just different. Can you can you play some more grooves on this? People want you to play on this instrument, the beast, okay. the beast. Sure. All right. Joined here by Kenny Malone, a staggering drummer, but actually a mallet. That's how he got into the to the Navy band. And he builds his own instruments, and uh, this is called oh, the... here's another... Yeah, what do you got there? It's a, uh, a shell drum. Oh, let's see that. It's made out of clay. I built it out of, like, coils. And on a turning, on a turntable. Took lessons at Centennial Art Center from a wonderful teacher, Lena Lucas. This is one of the drums that I built. I had a stand built for it, but it didn't look right with the Velcro strap I had to hold it down. But it goes around a spiral on the inside where you can actually change the low end and pitch and stuff. Wow. There's all kinds of melodies you can play with it. Not the tempered scale like our major scale or whatever we have, but it has its own scales. It's infinite. And can, the can temperature you, changes it. Kenny, can you talk about how rhythm has kept you, your soul together, alive? Well, the first time it happened to me was the first time the magic happened was when I was 40 years old. And we were trying to get our kids to... Look at the camera, people want to... Trying to get our kids to form a little rock and roll band of their own and show them what it was like to play together and communicate without words, you know. And... Uh, we played, my f trio that I had 
played seven songs without ever discussing a word of it. It was pure jazz. I mean, it was from a pure vibration. Vibration. Spontaneous moment. Continuous. When you hear with big ears uh, everything that's going on, including the lyric. I won't play a track without the lyrics, if it requires lyrics. You know, rhythms and things are like a language. So many times it's confused with how many notes you can play, and it's not. It's how one note leads to another note, like when we speak words. And leaving space, and that space is the notes as well. Yeah. And to give notes their full value instead of just the beginnings of notes. I always taught my students to count out loud. That was how they learned four-way coordination. Jim Chapin, page 35. You're the second guy to bring that up today, Ron Krasinski earlier, who said hi to you. He, he oh. Chap Chapin was his teacher too. Oh, yeah. He was very mechanical, but if you practiced it slow enough where you built these forms accurately with your breathing, with your breath, with, and I always say that's with your counting because you're using your breath to count out loud. You know, if you can, if you can sing it, you can play it. Let's finish with the beast. Okay. Take us home. Get wind or waves. You know, if you can paint a picture with music, that's what the whole difference is. It gives music life. That's why I play melodic rhythms now. You know, and it's happened like over a series of years that I've been playing with these different folks. But to play, Toby Gray, yeah, Pine, uh, Carl Perkins, Don Williams, Don Williams, Merle Haggard, so many great country gospel records, unknown. Yeah. You, you always see your name on them. Yeah, um, you know Doug Kershaw. Yeah, uh, you know, just finish finish with some melody, baby. Some what? With some melody. Much love to you, Kenny Malone. Thank you for being part of the program. Thanks, Jake. We'll be back later.